Adaptability is defined as uh, rapidly learning new skills, behaviors, and perspective in response to changing circumstances. So behaviors, skills, and perspectives. And this, as humans, is our niche. This is what we're able to do. Not that we always do it, but that we're able. So that's the regular definition. But I want to say that successful adaptation is, yes, learning new skills, behaviors, and perspectives, but doing it in a way that you don't feel so burned out or angry, grumpy, or wanting to punch life in the face. And has anyone felt like they want to punch life in the face? There's an Eminem song. Oh, man, we should have teed it up, Russ. That would have been good. Uh, there's an Eminem song, and he starts by saying, I just want to punch leap in life in the face. And I don't know why, but for some reason, I've been really relating to that <laughs> in the last year. So there's a way to adapt that is better, and that's the conversation that we're going to have today. I love this. I actually want to put, wait, this one here. I want to put that in my house somewhere. That's one of my goals. Yeah, I'm going to put it on a wall. Punch today in the face. It's owning it, saying yes, putting a positive spin on it, right? We want to be able to face change ooh, without feeling like this, right? Anyone feel like this when they're told they have to change? Move it. I want to punch people too, Melissa. Oh, I love that honesty that's going on in the chat. That's so beautiful. <laughs> so often with change, we feel like this, right? We're like, no, again? I don't want change. Change is hard. Change is uncomfortable. Look at this guy. I'm just like, feel it, right? And so we don't want to feel that way. We don't have to feel that way. Change is so hard because it forces us to face the fact, to face the truth that most of us want comfort over effort. I know this to be true because think about this. How many times have you had your alarm clock set? You wake up to the alarm and with powerful forces of your logical and illogical brain, you fabricate stories while you're pretty much asleep about how you could get or save extra five minutes or you could take another five sleeping. Who's done that? Anyone done that? Right? You're like, oh, five extra or five last minutes in the shower, I can make up for it. Like you're doing all this negotiating in your mind because your body, your brain is like, uh-uh, you want to be comfortable. You don't want to put effort. Effort sucks. Effort is hard. You want to be comfortable. We do this in our habits as well. Uh, it's a natural tendency that we can go into all kinds of science. Paul was so amazing for that. I'm just going to say that we like comfort over effort, and I think everyone probably agrees. So in the chat right now, let's just take a minute and share how you prefer comfort over effort. Let's be honest with each other. Comfort, what examples in your life is comfort over effort? Uh, I'll give you, I'll start with one of mine. Uh, I like to get up really, really early because it's the only time I have alone. And for a long time, I'd wake up and, and write because I'm writing a novel. Until recently, I decided, I intentionally decided, though, I don't know if that matters, that I'd rather watch Netflix. That's right. I'd rather get up at 5 a.m., make myself some tea, and watch that stupid younger show on Prime for 30 minutes. Yeah. So let's look at some examples. I'm going to read some here. Comfort for me is in the black and white. The gray is my uncomfortable zone. And the gray zone is actually where the adaptation happens. So thank you for sharing that. Staying home versus seeing people. Uh, avoiding difficult conversations, absolutely, comfort over effort, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, up at 4, 4 a.m. every day, coffee jam meets, sit on the deck watching the traffic. Ugh, Bonnie, I wish you lived near me. We can get up together and just hang out. Staying in PJs all day. Who wants to put jeans on? God, jeans are just not fun. I got my pleather pants on right now because they're comfortable. They're like leggings, but fancy. What else we got? Leggings instead of real pants. Oh, we think alike. This is fantastic. Sleeping, hitting the snooze button. Once you go elastic, it's fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that. So you can see from the chat, there's so many examples of how we choose comfort over effort. Thank you for all the contrib contributions in the chat. What we want to do instead is to have a different perspective. And remember, play along with me today, okay? I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions. It doesn't mean that there's a right or wrong answer, but I want you to be reflective. And by the way, there is a workbook. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to download it. It's a PDF workbook. You'll find it just above uh, the chat area. That's at least where I saw it on my, my phone. On the, I'm not sure where it's on the desktop under documents. Uh, you can print it off now, print it off later, make lots of notes. I'm going to be asking you lots of questions. So play along 
And I know it's easy to get distracted when you're in your room and you're just like hanging out and then you get a little Facebook notification or an Instagram chime, whatever the case may be. But this is an hour for you. So please just play along as much as you can because there's some important mindset tweaks that can happen when you do. So we're gonna go from comfort over effort to courage over comfort. Courage is the key word when it comes to adaptability. Courage is not something you can just think of. Courage is a verb. It's literally like gratitude. It's a muscle. It's a muscle that you have to work in order for it to grow. So we're going to continue to talk about courage throughout the next hour. But before we do any of that, I'm going to be sharing with you the three phases of adaptability, all this stuff, some really important tools that I think are very effective for adapting in a better way. Before we do that, it is time for us to play a game show. Yeah, you thought it was me game show music, but you got this instead. You like? It's kind of fun, right? Welcome to What is Your Adaptability? The Game Show. It's very simple and might remind you back in the days in the 90s when you get to got to answer those questionnaires in the magazines to find out who your next best friend was or what kind of friend you are or, you know, does he like you? All those important questions of our teen years. Today we're talking about your adaptability. So we'll go to full screen. That's okay. All you have to do is answer these questions. So you're gonna, there's nine of them in total, whatever. And it's a yes or no answer. So number one is Y or N. Number two is Y or N. Number, you know, you get the point. Super easy. And then afterwards, I'll tell you how to add it up. And we're going to find out how adaptable you actually are. So here's the first question. Are you ready? Give me one of these if you're ready. Put your hands up if you're ready. Are you ready to play along? Awesome. Okay, here we go. Number one, yes or no? At the gut level, do you tend to judge decisions or people's actions immediately as either right or wrong? Yes or no? Remember, it's not about overthinking this. It has to be your first truthful, honest answer because truthful and honest are so different. Okay, question number two. When you say hi to someone while grocery shopping and then you see them in the next aisle again, do you spontaneously change your shopping trajectory plan? Yes or no? <laughs> I'm loving all the answers in the chat too. <laughs> Remember, keep track of your answer so we can add them up. Number three, do you quickly and instinctively look at situations that arise at work as either good or bad? Be honest with yourself on this one. And I know as women, we are so hard on ourselves and it's so hard when we think we've disappointed someone. That's a whole different workshop. Number four, do you think, or do you typically think in terms of either success or failure, viewing failure as a catastrophic event? Remember, there's nine of these. Number five, as you drive away from the drive-thru, do you get soul deep annoyed when your coffee order is wrong again? Do you want to hurt someone? Do you use profanity to release the rage? Yes or no? That one's a very mixed. I'm seeing, I'm seeing both. Double yes, coffee is life. <laughs> oh, that is kind of true. My favorite thing to do every single day, my moment of peace, is after I drop off all five kids, because we had to get an international student, uh, I drop them all off, and then I go to Timmy's, and I get myself a tea and a sour cream glazed Timbit, just one, and it's my happy spot. I hope you have a happy spot every day, too. Next question. Do you rely primarily on previous experience to make judgments, not only about colleagues and their behaviors, but about whether a decision is right? Yes or no, your immediate response. Number seven, do you find yourself labeling colleagues who agree with you as smart and those who disagree with you as not so smart or at least less competent? 
Truthful answer, yes or no? Number eight, do you find yourself feeling immediately viscerally defensive even before you fully hear feedback from customers, clients, team members, or supervisors? Feedback. This is a question about how you feel about feedback. And number nine, our last question in the adaptability game. When a long and creative email you've been writing gets lost after your tab crashes, do you sit in loss for about two minutes, mouth gaping open in absolute disbelief before tearing up, then releasing profanity while frantically trying to see if you saved it? You did not. And then the moment of surrender that you'll need to rewrite the stupid email, but not before you take a 20-minute break to show the email gods you will not be broken and you are stronger than any tab crash might think you are. Yes or no? <laughs> You can't go back for a day. Who said that? That was oh, so many comments, I can't read the names. <laughs> I love all the honesty. It's fantastic. Well, thank you for playing along. We're going to keep playing. Let's see how we can add this up. So how did you do? You want to give yourself five points for every single yes of the nine questions and one point for every no. Before you add it up, I want you to scratch out question number two. Question number five and question number nine, they don't count. They were just fun. Two, five, and nine are out. So if you answered yes, it gets five points. If you answered no, it gets one point. Give you a second to add that up because that's half the fun, isn't it? Now we know what kind of boy we should date, what kind of friend we should be. really frightened the urge to move around. Okay, so we got, oh, we got a whole bunch of numbers in here. Look at that. Okay, so if you have anything over 10, you might want to reflect on who you are as a human being, really. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You know what? This whole questionnaire is really designed uh, to look at and to highlight how quickly we are as humans to fall back on our habitual way of thinking to lean on our predispositions and our perspectives to use, which is a survival thing, as Paul was mentioning, to use our past experiences to inform our future or current ones. And adaptability is about thinking outside of those boundaries. Adaptability is looking at the gray instead of the black and white. Your adaptability is so much more than just one skill. Again, it's looking at that gray element of life. It's being able to be flexible. I'll talk about flexibility in a little bit. I really think that adaptable, uh, adaptability is intentional living. Are you intentionally living? Are you making choices? Are you reacting or are you engineering? 